All right, let's get the show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Uh, welcome to another edition of Math 1108. Uh, hopefully, you guys are doing well. You guys are uh, looking good. Uh, the semester hasn't crushed you guys yet, so that's great. Uh, Important stuff, we're gonna start chapter three today. So hopefully you're excited for that. Your homework begins at chapter three. Um, so we went through chapter two, we learned about exponentials and logarithms because you know it's important and just to you know get the math uh, juices flowing. But uh, now we're going to actually start doing uh, stuff that is uh, important. Hopefully you are going to realize it's important and uh, actually perk up and start paying attention. So we're gonna start the financial math portion of the class today. Um, and that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And the journey is going to start with interest and someone else is coming in. Okay. Now, a wise man once said, you should be interested in interest. I, I said that. I, I said that last time I taught the class. But I said it because interest is the thing that makes the financial world go. Interest is the thing that allows people to take advantage of the thing that makes the fine interest is important is what I'm trying to say. So I hope you're you're you get you're you're excited to learn about interest because how interest works for or against you in every financial situation you're in uh, is going to be very important as an adult. Doesn't matter what your major is, what you want to do with your life, what career you're in, it does not matter. Uh, you need to know uh, how interest is working. It's important, you know. Uh, wise man once said. Okay, let's uh, actually jump into it. So hopefully you also have your calculators nearby because we will be using uh, our calculators today. Um, so if you can grab those, that would be cool. Because um, of course I'm gonna do problems. I'm gonna ask you guys to check the answers in your calculators. And I also want you to, I also want to know as well as you guys need to know that you know how to enter things in your calculators correctly. You're using the parentheses in all the right places, all that good stuff. Okay, so uh, let's actually get into it. So um, we, we, we're done with, uh, I don't know, part zero, <laughs> uh, where we talk about exponentials and logs. Okay, so, so that's done. Now let's uh, start the official part one. Uh, of the class financial mathematics. Part two, I think is going to be linear programming, which in itself is super important, but we're gonna do just the very basics. It's going to seem like one of those things. Uh, uh, let, I'll talk about it when we get there. How about that? Uh, and we are going to start talking about interest. We should be interested in interest. Okay. Um, so, Let's actually talk about what interest is. How about that? Uh, let's look at a definition. Interest is a fee charged by a lender when loaning money. Uh, the type of interest, well, let me put it this way. Um, let's move on. Uh, the principal. is the original sum of money borrowed. Um, that definition. Uh, what else do I want to tell you guys about? Uh, interest is charged at a, a percentage amount of some value. Now, the, the value that the percentage is charged on is what determines the type of interest. We're going to talk about that uh, later. 
um, this uh, percentage is measured on an annual basis and is and so it's called a percentage interest rate or annual interest rate. And annual interest rate is abbreviated A, uh, APR, right? So it's like your annual percentage rate um, and APR is often how it is uh, abbreviated. Uh, you'll notice when you try to go for applying for a credit card or a loan or something like that, they'll say, oh, 3% APR or something like that. And this is what they mean. They're talking about a percentage that they're charging you um, over a year. Okay. Um, the type of interest Uh, depends on how interest is charged. I'm going to talk about types and what sum it is charged on. There are three main types. Now, of course, when you go into finance, it's going to feel like there is an infinite number of types because they develop new rules and products and financial instruments all the time. Um, but at the end of the day, there's, there's really three main types of interest that you can charge. Um, there is going to be a simple interest. And compounded interest. All right, so those are the two things that we can actually charge in real life. The third one is one that is actually useful, uh, but useful in a theoretical sense. You can't actually do it. Uh, this is uh, called continuously compounded interest. But as you'll see, it's something that we can't actually do in reality, uh, unless we just literally just plug in a math formula and, and use it that way. Uh, but, um, it's very important for us to understand that for theoretical reasons. And I guess I'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk about all three types. So let's start with simple interest. Okay, so this is when interest is charged um, only on the principal um, I should charge based only on the principal and the time duration of the loan. This is called the loan term. Okay. Um, and basically that's uh, given by this formula. I for interest equals P R T. So this guy here is interest. Uh, not the not the percentage interest. This is the amount paid in interest. And uh, P is the principal. Right, so you take the original amount, you're going to multiply it by the interest rate. And 
and you're going to uh, do that uh, at the end of some time um, because your interest rate is in terms of time, right? It's interest rate per year, right? Or so you can measure time in years or you want your interest and your time to be measured in the same units. So that's something you need to be careful of. So sometimes uh, a problem uh, in class or in your homework might tell you something like, it might give you the APR, but then it asks you about um, how much interest is due some certain months from now. And the fact that they tell you the time in months and the interest rate in years is going to be important. You're going to have to translate one to the other. Usually you want to translate to years. So whatever number of months they tell you, you want to translate that to years and then just use that with the given interest rate. So that's gonna be important, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, principal times rate times time, that gives you simple interest. Uh, give you the original amount, charge me a percentage over some time, that's simple interest, as simple as you can get. Okay. Um, let's see here. So now, A, the amount you pay back. is given by A equals, you're gonna give back the original, pay back the original amount you borrowed, plus you're gonna pay back the interest that was gained, right? So this is the original amount borrowed um, interest accrued, as they call it. So that leaves you with uh, A equals P times one plus RT. And this is the, uh, the simple interest formula, as it's called. For future value, okay. Uh, which I should make that maybe a parenthetical statement. Um, uh, P is sometimes called uh, PV for present value. It's the value that you have now, the amount of money that you have now, what's worth now, uh, and A is do dittos called, is sometimes called FV for future value, the amount that you'd have to pay back or the amount that you expect to have in the future. Okay. So we'll uh, actually uh, talk about that in a bit. Well, probably in the next section, we'll call it that. Usually when you're talking about simple interest and stuff like that, we, they don't get all, uh, but in case you see it somewhere else where instead of A, they have FV and instead of P, they have PV, just know it's the same formula. Um, but that's, uh, that's the main formula. Okay, so um, let's, let's do an example finally. Been writing notes forever. Uh, here's some examples I got for you guys. I got you, I got you. Okay, here we go. Now these examples aren't meant to be particularly difficult, but they just are meant to make sure you get the idea of what we're talking about. So hopefully that's, uh, that's good. So here's an example of simple interest. Okay, so a problem that you might see or a problem type. Uh, simple interest is, is simple uh, in regards to this class. So chances are, if I'm going to ask you about simple interest, it'll be like part A of some problem where the second part I'm gonna ask you about one of the other kinds of interest, right? So in simple interest by itself is simple in every way, including the calculations. So it's not, it in, in and of itself, it's not a great test material. But of course we need to understand it um, because simple interest is used as simple as it is 
um, there are some important um, examples of where simple interest is used. And I'll, I'll mention some real world examples. Okay, so you borrow $1,000, 9.5 APR, no prepayment penalty. So here's the thing, that's something you need to read about. Sometimes someone gives you a loan and they charge you interest. They're expecting to make a certain amount of money off of you. And so if you pay it off early before they're allowed to charge all the interest they wanted, sometimes they'll hit you with an extra fee called a prepayment penalty. Like you paid it off too early, I couldn't get all my interest, so I wanna get something else, right? Um, a lot of people don't do that, but there are some people who do, so you need to like read the fine print. Um, so here's a loan you borrowed at 9.5% APR. If you pay it off early, it's no big deal, okay? Now, if simple interest is charged, um, how much would you have to pay back if you needed to pay off the loan in nine months time or in a year time, okay? So let's uh, look at uh, A, the nine months point. So here we know A equals P uh, times one plus RT here. Uh, we know that your P is a thousand. We know that your R is uh, 0.095. You always write the percentage as decimals when you're going to actually use it in calculations. And I spoke about how to translate the decimals in like two classes ago. Um, divide by a hundred, basically. 9.5 over a hundred gives you the decimal or you just move the decimal point two places to the left. Uh, so that's that and T says nine months, but I want you to uh, notice here that I'm going to write this as nine over 12 because I want to convert to years. So that I would use as nine over 12, um, which uh, is going to be what, three fourths, 0.75. So that's the kind of trickery. That's the that's the most trickery thing you can do, expect with a simple interest problem. Like, oh, I have to make sure all my units are agreeing. Um, so it's charged in APR, which is, means annual. And so when you say nine months, you have to change this to an annual basis. And so, yeah, that's all you do. So this means the amount you want to pay back is going to be a thousand times one plus. 0.095 times 0.75. So that's going to be approximately, uh, so of course this is money, so I expect you to round it to two decimal places unless otherwise stated. Uh, now, this is where you guys come in. Uh, plug this into your calculator and tell me what the answer is. Uh, just just go you don't have to raise your hand or anything yeah um, i got 1071.25 okay that sounds about right um so yeah so you're doing it correctly with uh, your parentheses in all the right place and stuff like that okay so awesome yeah that's how much you'd have to pay back so ultimately you'd pay back 71 dollars and 25 cents in interest if you borrowed this under simple interest terms for nine months um so you are paying $71 for the privilege of having the $1,000 now that you didn't have before, right? So you're going to end up paying $71 for that privilege, for borrowing someone else's $1,000 for nine months. Um, how much would you pay over a year? Um, again, here, uh, your P is 1,000. Your R is the same, 0 0.095, and your T is just one, right? It's, it's the same 
as was stated because it was stated as a year, which is the right units that we want. And so A equals P one plus RT. You're learning a new formula. Uh, what you wanna do is just write it all the time. So you remember it eventually. So I write out the general formula just to 0 0.095 times one, okay? And that's that's going to give you like 1095, right? Because a, a thousand times the uh, 0 0.095, you move the decimal point three places to the right. So that gives you 95. So you have a thousand times one, a thousand dollars plus a thousand times 95. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's that's gonna be that. So that's uh, that's simple interest. Okay, awesome. Uh, any questions on simple interest? Are are we good? Okay, I got the thumbs up. That's good enough for me. All right, uh, let's talk about the other one. Compounded interest. Okay, so. We've actually kind of looked at this before uh, when I was talking about exponential functions. Uh, so I'm not gonna derive the formula for you, but I'm just gonna kind of tell you what compound interest is and tell you the formula that we, we've developed before. Um, so uh, this is when interest is charged um, on the principal and accrued interest uh, over time. Okay, so how this differs from simple interest is that they give you interest on top of the interest or they charge you interest on top of interest in the sense that there's an original amount that you borrowed. Eventually, they charge you interest and adds to that amount. And then they pretend that that new sum is the original amount. And so the next time they charge you interest, it's charged on the bigger amount. And then when they charge you interest and that increases the amount, the next time they charge you interest, it's the percentage of that new amount. And so they keep charging you percentage of the new amount after interest has been added. So it's charging interest on top of interest on top of interest, and that's it's compounded, right? So you're, the amount, the actual value that you're being charged increases over time, even though the percentage stays essentially the same, is because the percentage you're taking is a percentage of a bigger chunk of money, right? So that's the main difference between uh, compound interest. Now, if that isn't as complicated or as, uh, as bad as you would think, they can make it worse. So sometimes they decide to, um, because they know you can actually get out of a loan early, they will actually compound it as in add interest on top of interest several times over a year. So that even if you get out before a year, they'd be able to get some interest out of you, right? Um, so uh, in this scenario, interest may be uh, split into installments and charged several times over the course of a year. So, uh, so there are some typical time intervals that you should know about. And these might be named, uh, but you're supposed to know the number that's associated with the name. Uh, I'll say number of times compounded. Per year. Okay, so of course there is the annual 
and that's just one time per year, right? So a problem might say, oh, you're being charged compound interest annually. And that just means they hit you with interest at the end of a full year. They, they, if, you, if you get out early, you don't get hit with the interest. Um, but they could have said, okay, semi-annually. So you have a loan compounded semi-annually. And this just means two times per year. So what they do is they would take the interest rate, they would divide it into two parts, and then they charge you each part at two points in the year. So usually like every six months, right? So for example, example, 10% uh, APR, in this scenario, they would charge 10 over two equals 5% after six months. Then charge another 5% on the new value. at the end of the year. So that's what I mean by breaking into installments. They literally divide the, per, the APR by the number of times they want to compound per year, and they hit you with those interest at certain periods of the year. So if they're charged semi-annually, what they'll do is they'll take the APR, they'll divide it by two, and they hit you with half the interest midway in the year, and then hit you with the rest of the interest at the end of the year. So even if you got out after seven months, you already got hit with interest on the sixth month. And so they'd get some interest off of you. And then if they charge you interest at the end of say the eighth month, um, that interest that they charge you on the eighth month pretends that the amount that you had up to that point with interest on top of it was the principal. So they, they always, Whatever they charge you in interest, they take that as the new amount that they're charging you interest on. So that's how that's going to work. Um, so kind of elaborated on that. But for the rest of them, I'll just tell you quickly what they, they would say. Uh, another common phrase is quarterly. It's compounded quarterly. And this just means four times per year every three months. Uh, they could say monthly. It could be weekly, and it could be daily. Now, of course, there's the issue of, oh, is it a leap year or whatever? But there are, these are the standard numbers, right? They don't count leap years. Like monthly means 12 times per month. Weekly means 52. Daily means 365. They don't go with the 365.27. Like they don't care about the actual here, right? That these are just the standard numbers that are used. Okay, so you should actually know that. Okay. Okay. So, do I have examples? Um, yeah, I mentioned I mentioned this in the blue. I don't know if I want to mention it again. So. We derive the formula. Or simple, well, not really derived, but I, I kind of gave you uh, the idea of how it came about. And it was P times one plus R over N times NT. This is the compound interest formula. Uh, where, of course, uh, A is, stands for amount, stands for future value. Uh, P stands for principal, stands for present value. 
R is the APR, the annual percentage interest rate. N is the number of times compounded per year. And T is the number of years. So uh, yeah, we've actually seen that formula before. Uh, let's actually use it. So here is a compound interest example. Again, using very round uh, numbers, just so you can get the idea. Okay, same thousand dollars, same um, APR. Uh, and we're paying back the money after one year. Um, but we have two situations that we want to look at. What if it was compounded quarterly, meaning every three months, four times per year versus daily? Okay, so for A, here, uh, P equals 1,000, R equals 0 0.095, uh, T equals 1, n equals four compounded quarterly. Uh, this means uh, that your a is equal to p times one plus r over n to the n t, which is 1000, one plus 0 0.095 divided by four. And then we're going to raise that to four times one. And how much is that? So one thousand ninety eight point four four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, B. Uh, here. Uh, we have the, the same P, R, and T because we, we were told that we're paying it off at the end of one year, right? They mentioned here, one year is the time. So same thing for time, but here N equals, you'd say 365. Why? Because it says daily. Um, so it's going to be the same formula we are going to use because we're told it's compound interest. So that means the A formula that I'm going to use is this guy. So that's going to be a thousand times one plus 0 0.095 over uh, 365. So they split the percentage into 365 parts and then they charge you a part at the end of every day um, times NT. Eleven oh one. Dot oh nine. Oh, dot one oh. You got eleven oh one dot one oh. Yeah. Does everyone agree? I got one zero nine nine point six five. Yeah, that's the answer I got. Yeah, that's what I. I mean, I quickly punched these into my calculator myself last night, and that's what I got as well. So if you got something else, you should make sure that you have the parentheses in the right place and you're doing the typing it out the right way. So in your calculator, depending on the calculator, how you'd probably want to go is you'd have 1,000, you type the multiplication sign, you open parentheses, you type 1 plus, you open parentheses again. 0 0.1095, you put the division sign, 365, close parentheses, close parentheses, put the caret, open parentheses, 365, multiplication sign, 1, or you just put 365 if it's multiplying by 1, and then you enter, right? So you have to make sure all your parentheses are in the right place because you, you can get the wrong answer. So even though I, I worked them out ahead of time, I want you guys to work them out to make sure that we're all getting the same answers because that's also something, like, like I said, um, 
sometimes even when you have the technology, we have the technology. You you can't uh, you you'll get the wrong answer if you're if you don't know how to use it properly. Okay, so that's that. Uh, notice that this person who is charging you the same one thousand dollars at the same amount of interest at the end of a year made ninety nine dollars off of you, whereas the person who charges you simple interest only made uh, seventy one. Uh, no, uh, made ninety five at the end of one year, right? So this, the guy who charged you compounded interest daily uh, made like four extra dollars off of you, almost five extra dollars. And again, as I mentioned, doesn't seem like a big deal in the beginning, right? But remember, the curve goes like this, right? In the beginning, it's not gonna seem like much difference, but eventually it turns into a lot of difference. That $5 and then they're charging you percent on top of that $5 and it, 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 uh, it adds up more than you realize uh mr smith yes um what would be examples of this in real life for uh let's say like home loans are typically compounded uh, i don't know every six months whereas credit cards are every day or does it change their yeah i'm going to give you some examples so uh and I'm, i'll write these down later but some real world examples is car loans are usually simple interest uh yeah home loans credit cards student loans they're all compounded uh, credit cards are compounded every day, as you said, amazingly, <laughs> they, like every day they hit you with interest, even though you never, a lot of people believe it's every month because they get their credit card bill every month, but it's actually not true. It's every month they report to you what they hit you with in interest, but they actually hit you with interest every day. And then they report to you after every 30 days, here's how much interest you hit you with. So a lot of people think that they're getting hit with interest every month, but it, that's not true. Uh, so credit cards are compounded, hit you every day. A bank loan is compounded. Uh, and you'd have to read the fine print to see how much it's compounded. Um, student loans are compounded. Uh, pretty sure they're compounded daily as well. However, um, there's a difference between federal and private. So for federal student loans, um, the government pays your interest for you as long as you are enrolled in school. So when you leave school, it's as if you had the same principle as the beginning, and then they start hitting you with interest compounded. Um, but in the meantime, the government pays the interest for you. So that's the difference between a federal loan and a private loan. Um, but yeah, these are some real world examples. So simple interest is used, right? Something like a car loan, or you know, chances are if you're borrowing off of a friend, they'll charge you simple interest. If you have a friend who's like, you borrow money off of them and they're like, I'll lend you the money, but you know, I'm charging you compound interest. <laughs> you probably want to rethink that friend. <laughs> like <it's> like <laughs> charging you interest is okay, but if your if your homie starts charging you compound interest, yeah, I'm gonna compound this every week, my dude. Like you're like, all right, that's the last time you borrow money from that dude, and it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I know we're we're acquaintances now. Okay, so yeah, uh, uh, compound interest is is a way to really rob you. Okay. Uh, following up on the last example, so this example right here. Uh, so yeah, most situations you're going to be hit with compound interest when you're going to a, a, an institution or a lender. There are some simple interest things though. Um, uh, how long would it take before you owe $200 in interest? Okay, assuming uh, quarterly compounded. So how do you guys think I would go about answering that question? I want to know how long would I have to have this loan for in order to make sure that I don't pay a dime more than $200 back in interest. So I, I borrow $1,000. I want to know how long can I keep this $1,000 so that by the time I pay it back, $200 is how much interest I should have to pay. I don't want to pay more than 20% total interest. What do you think? How do we figure this out? Um, I would set A to be twelve hundred, and then. Um, okay, set the amount to be twelve hundred. Yeah, because you want to pay back. That's what you want to pay back. Yeah, we know P. You borrowed a thousand. We know R. We borrowed uh, uh, the 
APR is 0.95. Uh, N equals four, it's quarterly. Uh, what is T? I would set it as X or unknown. Right, it's unknown. Change. Like that, that's literally what we want to find. Let's not throw in another variable. Let's just leave it as T. Uh, so now we know that your A is equal to P times one plus R over N to the N times T. So now we're going to plug in everything we know, 1,200, 1,000, 1 plus 0 0.095 over 4 times 4T. I don't know what the T is. So now uh, we have to solve for the T. I want to solve for this. Okay, my people, how do we solve for that? I divide by a thousand on both sides first. Okay, Log. so that'll give you like 1.2 over here. Yeah, then? Check the logs on each side. Log both sides, all right. So that's what we were doing yesterday. I want to see if anyone remembered, right? And at this point, it doesn't really matter what log you use, uh, but on your calculator, you'd see log to the base 10 and LN. Um, you can use either one, but in finance, they usually use log to the base 10. And what does that allow you to do? Uh, pop the 4T out in front. Right, so the 4T would come down in front. And then what? Um, divide both sides by log one plus. Yeah, and, and you can divide by the four at the same time, right? So you'd have log 1.2 divided by four log one plus 0 0.095 over four, right? And that would be your T. And that is going to be in years. And what did you guys get? Let's make sure you, you know like how to actually plug that monstrosity into your calculators, which is not the worst thing. In the next section, we're gonna do some formulas where it's like they're, they're huge and they're crazy. So you need to make sure you're getting your calculator practice in now. One point nine four. Uh, yes, I agree. That's what I got last night as well. Um, everyone else should make sure that they get that, that they know that that they can use their calculator to get that answer, because that's what I got as well. Um, so I wanted to appreciate something here, right? In the end, we compounded quarterly. We never. Yeah, compounded quarterly over year gives us $98, right? So you got charged $98 at the end of the first year. So someone who doesn't really understand compound interest might think, okay, I'll probably get charged $98 the second year, so I wouldn't hit 2000 yet. So it'll probably take me a little bit over two years to get to $200 in interest. It turns out, no, it takes you less than two years to get hit with that interest. Um, you won't hit the two-year mark before getting hit with that interest. And that's because it's not simple interest. It's compound interest. It builds on top of itself. And the more years it goes, your brain is going to think you have a longer time to hit a certain threshold of interest than you actually have. It's going to end up shorter. And this gap gets wider over time, right? So you're going to be thinking, man, it'll be like 15 years by the time I have to pay back that much in interest. But really, it's going to be like five. Right, so you you can get into trouble really, uh, really easily. Um, 
had a lot more planned, but we'll wrap up here. I'll just make a few more comments the, that I mentioned to Peter um, and just kind of wrap up here. Uh, so I want to just remind you, remember, uh, this is a big deal. The values might not seem very different now. We only did, went out a year, guys. It's not going to uh, be crazy. But I want you to remember, simple interest. Right? Someone's charging you simple interest. At time zero, you borrow key dollars from this person. It will raise like a straight line. Um, in fact, it would look like Y equals uh, P plus uh, PRT, where the P kind of functions as the Y intercept and the PR functions as the slope. Right? which is a polynomial, it's a straight line. Um, so the amount you owe over time is gonna look like that. Whereas with compound interest, if you plot amount versus time, you borrow P dollars in the beginning, it grows like this, right? Now in the beginning, it might not seem like a big deal, but it is exponential because the variable is in the power and the, the base, the base is a constant. You look at this formula, you'll notice that in this case, that the T, the thing that is changing, right? They'll, they'll keep the same interest rate and they'll keep hitting you with four times per year. And the original amount you borrowed is all the same. So this is a constant number. What's changing is how long you have the loan for. The T is changing, right? Whereas with uh, simple interest, you'll notice that the thing that is changing is again the T, but it's in the base, it's not in the power, right? So the variable being in the base versus in the power is a huge difference. And it's not a difference that you're gonna notice in the short term very much, but in the long term is where it gets you. So I really want you to remember, at this point you might be thinking, uh, you know, $95 versus uh, $99, uh, yeah, I guess they get four extra dollars out of me, whoop de doo for them. No, you don't understand. If you let this go and don't pay attention to it, you will be in trouble eventually. Um, and you'll be in trouble a lot quicker than you would think, right? <laughs> so within two years, your, your, your idea of time is already messed up. Imagine carrying something for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, it's, and it gets worse over time, it's not, it's not gonna be a, a great thing. Also, I just wanna mention those real world examples and then I'll let you guys go. Yeah. Peter doubted me. I'm like, I got you. I told you guys, I'm gonna make this class useful for your real life. So of course, I'm not just gonna teach you the math. I'm gonna tell you why you should care. So of course I had some real world examples plan. Uh, Peter, you know, trying to play me uh, saying that, oh, you, do, are there any real words? What are we gonna use this in our life, Javon? Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. Uh, car loans, right? Right, your car salesman is already going to try to rob you. The bank won't, right? This is, this is usually simple interest. Usually. Um, but of course, they charge you the interest up front. So what you borrow for the loan has the interest built into the price. So technically, while you're paying off the loan, you're also paying interest. They don't actually wait until the end of the, the term to hit you with interest. But the calculation is a simple interest calculation for something like a car loan. If you're looking at bank loans, uh, like personal loans, credit cards, credit lines, for sure these are compounded. Um, credit cards, I can tell you for sure, credit cards are compounded daily. Uh, for the others, 
Usually it's also daily, but uh, I would say read the fine print. It might not be. Um, student loans. Uh, these are compound interest. Uh, usually daily as well. Uh, it, it's usually at a lower rate though. So they hit you daily, but they're not charging you like 18 to 20%, like a credit card would charge you. It'll be, be a lot lower in the single digits. 7% um, is probably very high for a student loan. Your student loan should be three, four, something like that. Um, but it, it is compounded daily. Uh, if you have a federal student loan, Uh, the government uh, pays interest, pays your interest. While in school. So as long as you're enrolled and you're taking classes at the threshold that they want, you have to be at least a part time student, they'll pay your interest uh, private uh loans and this is all under the student loan category right um not a private bank loan private loans all on you kid but the benefit of a federal student loan is that they pay your interest as long as you're a student so you start out once you graduate you start out with the initial principal that you borrowed. It's not because they were nice and they didn't pay you interest, it's that the, the lender charges the government that interest for that period of time. Um, yeah, uh, we'll stop there today. Uh, I wanted to get a little further, but I mean, this is fine. It's not, no, no rush, uh, but yeah. Uh, we'll talk more about interest and comparing interest terms. We'll talk about APY versus APR, why it's important who would charge you APY versus APR. And yeah, we will uh, kind of wrap up. We'll wrap up there for now. Okay, uh, hopefully there are no questions. Uh, thank you for your attention and sticking with it. And I guess I will see you guys on Friday. Ciao.